The invasive pasture pest, Chilean needlegrass, has been an issue for many years in Marlborough, but some are learning how to manage it. And the more people are aware of the grass and its biology, the more likely its spread can be contained. The Chilean needlegrass has been in Marlborough probably since about the 1930s. It's a serious pastoral pest, really, for a number of decades. The seeds on this plant are very, very sharp and can then burrow into sheep, into pouts, into eyes, into the flesh, and can make sheep farming very difficult to hold sheep right through and hold them on land affected with Chilean needlegrass. So that is the main threat, especially in this dry east coast country like Marlborough, um, and also other regions like Hawke's Bay and Canterbury. Um, and there are up to about 15 million hectares um, of, of this kind of country that can be affected by Chilean needlegrass. And we're sitting at about 3,000 hectares currently, so um, you know, the, the potential threat there is, is quite large. Marlborough and Hawke's Bay have quite substantial infestations. When those aerial seed heads come up and they've got very sharp seeds on them, and that can be sort of through October through to January, over the main summer seeding period. For farms that do have it, that's the period of time when they have to really alter their farm system to work with it. And also that's the main time when there's a risk for those seeds being moved as well, whether it be on livestock, hay, machinery. That's a real focus of the program, is to try and keep that spread to a minimum. In 2011, there was a new herbicide that was registered uh, for use in New Zealand. Uh, it has been used a lot in Australia, um, active ingredient flupropanate. That is the primary tool that we're, that we're using at the moment. That's a residual, residual herbicide. Um, and that is proving to be fairly successful in some of this country here, where you can transform from either Chilean needlegrass dominated, uh, dry pastoral country, into a bit of a, more of a permanent crop scenario but it's a multi-pronged approach. So the use of competition and cropping in combination with herbicide control is proven to be the most effective. We've produced a couple of short identification videos as part of the awareness project. That runs through what the plant looks like, the times of year to look for it, some of the characteristics of the seed. There's a lot of collateral out there to help farmers identify that plant. We are still continuing work to better understand the new flupropanate herbicide. There has been some, you would call, undesirable impacts on, on non-target pasture species, so we're trying to understand a little bit better how to use that and integrate that herbicide into farm systems, and also um, improving ways to use that herbicide to get better results in, in the short to medium term. What we have here is a seed ball, essentially. The seed of the Chilean nettlegrass with the backward-facing hairs and the corkscrew tails they adhere together readily to help them get transported around. So the hygiene of mowers especially, um, or any farm machinery that can pick up seed and or form seed balls like this one, can be picked up and moved long distances. So uh, that's one of the main reasons around knowing how this, this, this plant and, and the seed of this plant can move, is to try and prevent those long distance spread and form new infestations. So this little face here, Tim, what are your sort of plans with that one? This is going to be solidly task force. I mean, we've just taken over this, this block in here, and um, yeah, this is around the sheep yard, so. Fair bit through here? Pretty much the first yeah, day we came into bit, the district, we got involved in uh, vineyard development, and we knew it had the needle grass. Um, I rang one of the council guys, which I knew, and he came out to show me it, and uh, yeah, we could see it from day one. It was everywhere. From a farming point of view, it limits to what you can do with the country. Selling stock, store stock, Sheep, it plays nightmares with, um, with the sheep, especially through the summer periods. The long seed head on it, um, it's very sharp um, and a long tail, and when it um, gets wet and damp, it, it contracts and corkscrews into the, into the fleece, and then it goes straight into the meat. And it can get in pretty quick, like within a couple of days, a day. Uh, I've even seen it in, in sh um, sheep's fleeces within, um, into the pelts within an hour. So it's nasty stuff. Certainly need to check your dogs every night, especially move them off the place, on and off the place if you go in other places. If they certainly do pick it up. I wouldn't run a beardie here. There was not a lot you could do. Um, you had your hands tied and that's why people have struggled here in the past. But um, with the introduction of Task Force five odd years ago, yeah, we started to make some headway and um, you can keep on top of it. There's a three month withholding period with the Task Force chemical. So you are limited to what you can run and where you can run things. Um, so you've got, you've got to do a lot of um, background work, working where you can put stock and, and that sort of thing. The guys that are in here previously, they'd made a crack. There's some crops that are drilled and grasses and species they've used, and it was evident what was working amongst the needlegrass and what wasn't. 
And with the introduction of the task force, we could see volunteer grass coming through. And these are the species that sort of we've been concentrating on. But it just is working into a summer fallowing program and it seems to be working really well. We're going through a cropping phase, um, task force with Roundup, crop, and then um, summer fallow to second, summer, and then um, straight into a permanent pasture. Well, the challenges in the vineyard is obviously you can't use the task force herbicide. The um, needlegrass inside the vineyard itself has no bearing on the production of the vineyard, so it would be easy to sweep it aside, but morally it can get away big time. On the blocks we're looking after, um, we have a select number of contractors. We're washing all the vehicles that are coming out of there. Uh, all the machinery, it's inspected by the council. They have contractors that come around and inspect it. 24-7, you just pick up the phone and they'll come and inspect it. Uh, but we're looking at a bulldozer, we're sort of, to clean a bulldozer out, you're sort of looking six to seven hours. So I personally did all the machinery myself, um, and then it was inspected and then it went. But um, yeah, that's about the best we can do. Stock are great in the vineyard, and I'd recommend the stock in the vineyard. They do a great job, and it saves a lot of time management-wise. Um, the needle grass is an issue, but we mainly stocked it through the winter when the needle grass seed was not evident, and all stock that came off the place went straight to the works. It was all finished, and through the winter here, we put in some really good land weights, and here yeah, got some good stock away by August. You don't want it. You just don't want it. No. From a farming background, you certainly don't want it. Um, the vineyards, I mean, it's a pain, but it doesn't affect on production. But yeah, certainly on, from a farming perspective, in terms of sheep especially, um, yeah, it's not good at all. This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.